when we start the investigation we always follow the trail of clues isn't it so there is a path where we keep moving forward and eventually find the proof of the defector which is basically our culprit isn't it so the real question here is who is doing what and the reason is to try to catch the culprit and let's see if cloud trail can help us find who is doing what so as I told you before, when we think of the word trail, we imagine a mark or a series of signs or objects left behind by the passage of someone or something. So when we combine both of these terms, cloud and trail, we must understand there will be a situation while working in cloud platforms where things might fail or there could be sudden altercations to permissions or authentication, which could affect the way things work. And the peculiarity of these issues could be that you might need to have the proper data of the person who actually made the changes. So if you imagine the scale at which the infrastructure would be in the production environment, you would be eating your heads away trying to find out who did what. Who is the person which actually made the changes? Like who gave the permissions for S3 to this EC2 instance? And like who is the person who gave admin permissions to this user? These things might look very small, but when it comes to resource critical problems, you could get fired if you get caught making mistakes that could impact the customer. No, you won't get fired, obviously, but you get the seriousness of the context, isn't it? And if I have to put all the above in a slightly more complicated way, then listen to this very carefully. AWS CloudTrail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing and risk auditing of your AWS account. Remember that AWS account. So eventually, what does this mean? So whenever you read something like AWS CloudTrail is a service. So if this is a service, then you need to either enable it to use it or use its features or else it's already running and you need to capture the information it is providing us. OK, so there might be two situations in this one. Now, I think all of you will try and recall whenever you read this statement like this is a service. So when you read something like this is a service or cloud trail is a service, cloud watch is a service, you must relate to that. So this will be a type of feature which you need to enable to make use of it. And whenever you hear about the term audit in the exam, like which service helps you with auditing in your AWS account, think of cloud trail. OK, remember this very carefully. Now let's see the process of CloudTrail that we have here. Just like in CloudWatch, I told you before about the four pillars. Here as well, we have four pillars. The first one is capture, the second one is store, the third one is act, and the fourth one is review. First, we capture the activity that takes place in the AWS services with CloudTrail events. So these will be our data points that we capture. So these can be like AWS services in the sense like it could be your AWS account. So whatever is going in your AWS account, it will be captured. So those will be our data points. Secondly, we need to store it somewhere so that we can make use of it. So we store the CloudTrail events to dedicated S3 buckets or we can use CloudWatch logs as well. The third is to act. So we can make use of CloudWatch events and alarms to take actions based on the data points that we have. So this is similar to what we exactly have done before while we have used CloudWatch. So I think you can relate to this. Last but not the least, a review. So here in CloudTrail, we can push the CloudTrail events to S3 buckets and we can make use of AWS Athena to analyze the logs. So when you have followed these pillars and enabled CloudTrail, it will help you with first compliance audit. So with a compliance audit, you have access to information needed to demonstrate that AWS resources were managed according to the rules and regulatory standards. And then with resource lifecycle tracking, you can track an AWS resource from creation to deletion, like who created the resource, what are the changes that were made to the resource, what permissions were given or removed from the resource and ultimately if it was deleted. The next thing is operational troubleshooting. So this is also very similar. You can identify the most recent changes made to the resource in your environment and who exactly did that. And then we have security analysis. Here you can see which user activities failed due to inadequate permissions. So this is something that is most widely used in AWS accounts to resolve errors with permissions. So now that we have some idea about how the pillars function, let's see how we can make use of CloudTrail. But I want to reiterate this in the exam 
or in general when it comes to the term audit or compliance or security audit the service that we make use is CloudTrail. now let's move on you know what there is a line in the documentation that i really enjoyed reading and it reads do you have the need to track the api calls from one or more aws accounts if so the new aws cloud trail service is for you remember this and read it once again or once or twice there's a really good statement to summarize what cloud trail actually does for us now let's start remember this very carefully every action that takes place on aws in your account will be monitored Okay, I'll repeat this once again. Every action that takes place on your AWS account will be monitored. The only thing that you do is enable the service to help you store the data points in a safe place so that it can be validated and reviewed and audited later in the future. So when we use CloudTrail, remember that all the calls made to the AWS APIs using the AWS Management Console, the AWS Command Line Interface, that is a CLI, or your own applications or third party software will be recorded by the cloud trail and that actually publishes the log files to amazon s3 buckets of your choice so you can create your own s3 bucket or while you're creating a cloud trail aws also can create a designated bucket for you so that's not something that you need to worry about and with any action taking place the log files are generated and it can be stored on s3 and a very important thing here is that CloudTrail can also send notifications to SNS topics and you can also view the logs on the console. So these are the three main options that we have. So you have AWS Management Console, you have the AWS SDK applications, you have the AWS CLI and we have the CloudTrail functionality here which actually stores the data points in the designated buckets or it can create SNS topics or you can view them in the Management Console as well if you want to do some debugging. And these are some of the services that CloudTrail logs APIs for. So we have uh, EC2. This, these are very popular services, isn't it? So we have VPC, we have EBS, we have EC2. We have the relational database service that we have, that is RDS. We have the identity and access management, IAM. We have the STS, security token service. We have Redshift and we have CloudTrail. And there are other services that uh, CloudTrail has recently added that you can see in the documentation as well. So once you have the log files stored in the S3 bucket, you can use AWS Athena to query them and take action on that and as well as create CloudWatch alarms. And the best part is that once you get the logs, you can as well use third party analytics applications from our AWS partners. And that's something that I really like. So now let's see and understand what can you analyze with CloudTrail's data. So the first question that we will get the answer for when using CloudTrail is what actions did a given user take over a specified time period? Yes, that's right. We need the answers while auditing as to when this resource was created, who and when these permissions were changed, who deleted and when the resources were deleted. And based on that, we can get a lot of information. So these are the things that are really important when we are doing security audits. So the second one is for a given resource, which AWS user has taken action on it over a given time period. We can see who has created this S3 bucket, who created replications for S3. We can see who created this EC2 instance or deleted the instance. And these questions can be answered and for a period of time. And the third one is what is the source IP address of a particular activity? So this is very important because the source IP tracking makes it easy to take actions or either to either whitelist or blacklist not just the user but as well as the side block as well and obviously the source ip determines the instance that made the request so it is very very helpful and these three questions that you have are marked in red and you must remember them all the time because these questions are the answers to your problems and your solutions in CloudTrail. and here i have mentioned the link for the newly added services support for CloudTrail. you can check them out and the best thing about using CloudTrail as like other services in AWS is that there's no charge for using CloudTrail. You will pay for the usual S3 and SNS charges to store the data and to receive the notification. That's it. Now you tell me why shouldn't people use this service? It's very good, isn't it? So I hope this was clear. Let's move on.